Hello, you're listening to A Game of Fate. There hasn't been any uh, show for a few weeks, so my schedule got all screwed up over the holidays. But this is a, a one-off special, so I've released two episodes today. Uh, the first episode of the next story arc, and this episode, which is just a special of me talking about the show. Little episode, just to explain things, because, you know, why the hell not? This is the only time that I will be going into uh, the mechanics of the game and explaining things like that. So I'm going to keep this as reference if people want to go back. I'll, I'll talk about it in other episodes, but I'm not going to explain the game in, other, in every single episode. So it's possible you're coming back to this from the future, where you've listened to an episode and like, what the hell was going on? Now you come back to listen to this to find out a little bit more about what the hell was going on. So what is this funny little show? Well, I've been playing role-playing games for a long time, playing lots of games for a long time, but I did some D&D in school, and that evolved very quickly into Rifts. Rifts is the game I've played the most of by far. It's, um, it's essentially Dungeons & Dragons with a sci-fi setting. That's the easiest way I can describe it. When it comes to role-playing games, the easiest way to describe anything is to say it's like Dungeons & Dragons to people, because that's the one thing people have actually heard of. Even when I'm talking about Fate and I'm trying to get people to come on this show, I say it's a role-playing game like Dungeons & Dragons. Fate is nothing like Dungeons & Dragons. It's kind of like if somebody asks me what uh, Mary Poppins is, and I say, oh, it's a movie like Fight Club. Yes, they're both technically movies, but they are not comparable. <laughs> but it's in that vein, if you have a character and you roll some dice, and that's close enough, that's all people really need to understand. So always, I got away from it for a while because it's always hard to get a group together to meet regularly and that's when I switched more into collecting board games because it was easier to get a random group of people together and play a board game, whatever board game, it didn't matter rather than it was to try and get the same group of people continually together to continue playing an RPG of some sort. But I did RPG on and off, finding some good one-shots like um, Dread and Paranoia is quite good for a one-shot and some things like that and then one of our group got into Fate and we started a small Fate campaign with a um, pirate setting and I just took to it. We got really deep. It's, it's really deep into character creation and, and story creation and everything like that. So that's a big part of it. And I'm a writer and a filmmaker. So I'm very much into that. I really, really la- latched onto the storytelling aspect of Fate that's so much deeper than I think any other game I've played. The rest of the group had sort of a mixed feeling about it. There's there's was mixed results, but I, I would have happily kept playing that game on and on and on and on. Flash forward, I've gone through uni, managed to play some games in uni. Now I'm an adult or a very close approximation and I just, again, just struggle to get people together to play a game. Uh, eventually, some actor friends of mine were trying to get D&D started, but they struggled to have a find a dungeon master. So that's always the, the hardest part to fill. So a D&D campaign kicked off with me as a dungeon master and that got me thinking about the whole thing again. And we, um, we ended up playing, I ended up organising a couple of one shot things and getting back into that sort of style. And I got big into uh, Critical Role which is Geek and Sundry's Dungeons and Dragons show. I got into it very early on, maybe episode three or four, um, back when it when it first started. I, I started watching it. And I've watched it all the way through now. They've just finished their first campaign, and they're about to start a new one in, uh, in next week. And we were fairly deep into our other podcast, the Deleted Scene podcast, where we talk about movies and things, which is kind of our, our the big passion amongst our group, obviously, because we're filmmakers. And that started me off on podcasts again. I used to listen to a lot of podcasts, but... Having producing one, it now sort of made me delve back into it. And the combination of that and Critical Role made me start looking into actual play podcasts like uh, Neo Scum, I'm a big fan of. Um, the One Shot Podcast is really good. Uh, there's a few others as well. D&D is for nerds. Um, there's some other, a few others as well. And since we're already producing the podcast and I have all the equipment and everything for it, I suddenly thought, well, why not make a podcasting, why not make a podcast role playing show, an actual play show? which might be a easy way to draw people in to play. Really, I want to play the game. That's really what I want to do. Really, what I just want to play Fate. But it's so hard, as I say, to get a regular group together. If I make the show with a rotating cast, maybe I can not trick, let's not say trick, maybe I can persuade uh, my friends, my filmmaking and acting friends, uh, that this is it, that it's role-playing is cool and they should come on the show and play a game and then maybe that will morph into playing more games and things like that i fooled them all to thinking i was making a serious show actually i'm just trying to get them around my house to play games my fate is a good question as i say i'm a big fan of the game but also there's a lot of dungeons and dragons is out there a lot everyone knows dungeons and dragons so there's quite a lot of those sorts of games out there and there's a few other so there's some there's some fake stuff as well but primarily it's because i'm a storyteller and i knew that by doing fate i could tell a variety of different stories i could pluck the ideas from my head that have never been developed or maybe some of the ideas that have been developed that i don't know what to do with and just 
plonk them down, stick some characters in there and just run this story that I had. So as a storyteller and a writer, that's what appeals to me about running these games. I obviously love playing these games as well, but the writer in me just has a, a, an itch that needs scratching. Uh, and, and this is, I was kind of had this in mind as maybe it could fulfill that because I keep writing things for games that then never happen because we just never managed to get people together. The Dungeons and Dragons games that I ran, none of us had the books. We had the um, free rules from their website. Uh, and I think maybe one of us had the starter kit or whatever, but we had the basic setup and we sort of knew the game. And I'd watch Critical Role, which I guess was <laughs> it's the same difference, I suppose. Um, so we just went for it and I created a little scenario that I thought would last two or three sessions. And the players were sent into a, a town. I, I created a town. That's all I created. A vaguely idea of the world. But I created the town. The players were sent in to steal a thing and kill a guy. And they could do it by whatever method they wanted to. They didn't even have to kill him or steal it. They could maybe find a way around that, whatever. They were essentially being blackmailed into doing this thing. And they had to figure out whether they were going to do it, how they are going to do it, and what the consequences of that would be. It ended up lasting, I believe, nine sessions. Because the story spawned, the players went in directions that I didn't think they were going to go in, as players always will. Uh, and I had to expand the story, and I had to write this stuff, and I had to improvise all these elements that I then fed into a much larger story. We're now working towards a, a bigger campaign game, which will be kicking off on uh, soon, actually, in a couple of days, based in the aftermath of that game. So the story that I ended up writing for that mini game isn't going to waste. I'm I'm feeding into this new world that's going to then build off of these characters, and I have um, currently seven players in the game who are probably not going to be able to make it every week, but we can swap in and out as to whoever's where. Not the point, obviously, not relevant to the show. That leads me into the original question, which was why Fate. Fate, for anyone that doesn't know, it is a series of mechanics um, and quite a very really extensive rulebook of of how to use these mechanics. But it has no setting, it has no characters, as in it doesn't have classes or races or uh, rules for magic or rules for, mo rules for much of anything. There are supplement books that flesh out some of these elements, but the Fate Core book and the Fate Accelerated book are the bare bones of a game which you then slap your theme on top of. Pick a setting, chuck people in. Um, and I've played uh, Fate a few times and the best way I've found is always to come together and with a, a vague theme a vague like core to your theme and then just build from there so for the campaign game for this the core was um superheroes which we kind of deviated way away from but the idea was that i wanted the players to be characters who had unique abilities that they are there are not a there's nobody else in the world like their character their character has a unique skill set and some unique powers abilities that are supernatural in some way or are extraordinary in some way we then built the world from that as a group. So me and the players, we sat down and just from that tiny little core, we built outwards as to who the characters were, what the world was, what the world did and everything else. That also means you have to fill in the rules. So you don't go into a fake game knowing, oh, hey, there's going to be magic or hey, there's going to be robots or going to be whatever. You don't know that when you go into a fake game. You go in and you figure out what everybody wants to be and then you build the world off of that. And character creation isn't say, oh, this person is a human fighter, this person is an elf ranger, whatever. Your characters are a series of story points. So you have your character's origin, effectively, um, or their first adventure, uh, it's listed in the book. And then there are three other aspects which are told through the story of that character and how they interact with each other. You swap stories and you build on each other's stories and you say how you met and you explain how your group came together and that tells the story of your character rather than having say a set of stats like strength and charisma and whatever else and uh, and, and a class and a, a race or whatever or whatever you are your character is your collection of story elements which means in a way there can be literally anything and either you can have the parameters of your world set out and build your characters within it or as we did you can build your characters and then build your parameters of the world out from those characters that tends to be what I prefer to do because I like the players that have start with complete freedom of what they could be. So we've ended up with a slightly more magic, mysticism, supernatural focus that I didn't didn't necessarily expect, but I'm, I'm more than welcome to, rather than the superhero side of things. And as players discuss character creation, there becomes a uniformity to it. So we, as I say, we did go into a magical, supernatural way, and every character has kind of gone that way. Um because of the group discussion it's a, it's a group discussion as to who your character is you don't just go and just decide it's a you figure it out as a unit 
So back to the bones of the show, we have that campaign, that supernatural superheroes storyline that we have begun recording with the same key cast. But whilst that's scratching one creative itch, in addition to scratch my other, my writer's itch, I've got the um, one-shot Fate Accelerated campaign. So Accelerated and Core are essentially the same thing. Accelerated is just a streamlined version that doesn't require uh, all the fluff and the story elements and doesn't require you to work out your skills and your everything else. It's just basically a condensed version of the exact same rules and system. For that, I've put together all my spare pieces of story and I've written some new stories and I've just got a list of stories that we're going to run through. Um, and every session going forward, we're we'll yet to see if this is how successful this is going to be i'm going to offer the um, players a choice of three stories and they can pick one and then that's the game we'll be playing and we'll do character creation on the fly um in the in the first episode or at some point during the telling of the story um it might evolve each one of them will be slightly different there's slightly different character creation elements to each one so as it currently stands the campaign will go out as frequently as we can we can record the next episode will be the first episode of session zero the campaign and then each session will come out so it'll be session zero then session one so session zero is going to be about four episodes session one will then be the same about four episodes and so on so every session we meet up we'll record and then i'll cut it into a bunch of episodes and between each session each session is almost like a series hopefully there'll be a little arc inside each session that concludes um if it works out that way um, but between those we'll have some one shots of these fate accelerated um just stories just chuck some a rotating cast just random cast dropped in and see how they do. In terms of the Fate game, um, there's some mechanics that I'll just very briefly run through. Fate only uses one set of dice. It uses four dice that have two negative symbols on them, two positive symbols on them, and two blank sides. They're effectively D3s, in which the numbers are minus one, zero, and plus one. You then roll all four of those dice and work out your total, pluses and minuses, minus one for the negative symbols and plus one for the positive symbols, and then the blank faces are just nothing. You then get a result between negative four if you rolled four negative symbols or positive four if you rolled four plus symbols with zero being the average roll. They then add their skills. So in the campaign game, they'll have a list of skills as you would understand it from most RPGs from like a Dungeons and Dragons kind of things. You have stealth and fighting and things like that. In the um, Fate Accelerated, they have just a list of ways in which they're doing things. So they have, uh, I think it's sneaky and um, forceful, they just have a list of, they have uh, seven or eight ways that they can do an action. So their actions are going to be fairly generic, but then they're going to be doing it in a certain kind of way, depending on what they're good at. They'll add that to their dice roll, and I'll consult the ladder of what I've decided the difficulty level of whatever they happen to be doing is. And if they beat it, they succeed, and if they don't, they fail. The thing about fate, though, is that you're not continually rolling dice to do everything. In D&D, you roll dice all the damn time. You roll dice to do, to get out of bed in the morning, you might have to roll a dice whatever in fate it's very clearly stated that your characters are the heroes of this story they are the protagonists they are meant to be competent and successful and be saving the day as much as possible they are not level one trying to catch some giant rats or just danger of killing themselves by falling down the stairs um, no these are the heroes of this land and they don't have to roll dice to do everything they only have to roll dice if failure is dramatically interesting. So if they have to pick a lock and they know how to pick locks, it's assumed they've just done it. If they have to pick a lock because the room they're in is on fire and they need to escape, or well now they need to roll dice because failure will have consequences. If there's no significant story-based consequences for failure, then there's no need to roll dice in fate. The other element is fate points. So every character will start each game with a certain number of fate points, and in the campaign they reset every session. And they can spend these fate points in various ways. They can spend them to manipulate their dice rolls, to add them or to re-roll their dice. But significantly, they can spend them to affect the story. So they can spend a fate point to declare a story element based on their aspects or based on their current circumstances. This is quite useful and quite key for the players. It means that they can manipulate the story in some quite significant ways if they're canny about it. This is what I think sets fate aside from other RPGs. Some RPGs have got similar-ish systems, but this is really that gives the players a quite a lot of control if they want to take it. They don't have to, but if they want to be involved in the story in that way, they, they now have this ability. And that's the bare bones of how the show works. You can get information from Evil Hat Productions' website on the game. They, they just want people really to be playing the game, so they've got a lot of the rules available on there. 
on their site in um, PDF form. So you can go on there and you can find the rules and you can see if you want to play and you want to try. And if you do, please do get the books and please do contribute and everything else. But you can give it a try from there. We've really enjoyed recording what we've done so far. Uh, I've got a couple of recordings coming up as well. We'll see. It should last us for a good long while. Um, and I, I just I just really hope you're enjoying this show on, in some way. Do, if you haven't already listened to uh, Looking for Our Souls, which was the very first recording we did, which is a bit shaky. We're a bit light on the rules because I didn't have time to explain them to anyone. And um, the recording method, I was a bit preoccupied making sure the recording was going okay because I hadn't done it before. I had to hold mics up and everything. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening to the show. Please do subscribe and like and find us on uh, Twitter at uh, Game of Fate Pod or find the Diddy Sim Podcast at Deleted Scene Pod. Search for a Game of Fate podcast on all the usual social media. You can find us on uh, Facebook and things. Um, you can find this show, as you may have already, on iTunes and Stitcher uh, and Podbean is where we go up. If you like it, post it about. Tell your friends. Say, hey, come listen to this. Um, play it out the window and loudspeakers and put it in the car and force everyone to listen to it because they can't leave because they're trapped in a car with you uh, as you drive off into the sunset. If we get uh, 50 reviews, I'll do a sequel to Looking for Our Souls on Halloween because we recorded that on Halloween for a Halloween episode uh, first when it first went out. So yeah, I'll do another one. I'll do a sequel this coming Halloween if we have 50 reviews or just as soon as we have 50 reviews, I'll just do a sequel to it. Why not? Yeah, do that. 50 reviews. Give us a review. It can be bad. I don't mind. Just it's just numbers. I just, I just want to know someone listened somewhere. Even if they hate me, I want to know someone listened to me. It's not just whistling in the dark. If I do any more chats like this, they'll probably appear on my YouTube channel. So I am the one bearded man, which is worth mentioning. Uh, you can find me, the one bearded man, which is a joke that I feel like nobody gets. But uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Christian's Brain. That's Christian with a K or search for the one bearded man on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. I have a YouTube channel that I probably haven't put a video on for like seven months or something. Um, I should get on that. But yeah, no, hopefully, hopefully, stuff and things. Thanks for listening. Please continue to listen. Please. Goodbye.